Hello. Yeah, 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 I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still hanging around. I sure I'll show you my toe, or what's left of it. Anyway, putting on my e.l.f. putty primer with its very own little putty primer brush. I figured I'd get this on and let it start soaking in just a little. And we'll see how all of this stuff goes today. Yes, I have been absent for a while. Again. It's been an interesting bit of time. I have a another toe that's going to have to be worked on. This one, though, is not an emergency. I've got, if you know anything about feet, and especially if you've ever been around somebody who's a dancer or a shoe fitter or anything like that, you will have probably heard the term Morton Foot. A Morton Foot is one of them feet that's got long spindly toes. But the second toe the second one can be as much as a half size longer than the rest of the foot. Both of my feet have that long second toe. Now, because of wearing shoes, especially when I was still wearing heels, that were not probably the best bet for my feet. Both of those very long second toes, which were also double jointed, are now pretty much frozen in a hammer toe position with the knuckle just off the foot is stuck in this position sticking up like this so it gets rubbed by everything but the main the front joint bends backwards so my toe sits like this now if doc was to just i used to be able to bend this one much farther back doing that routine but arthritis yeah if Doc was to just straighten this out, this toe, literally, is, if you put my foot on a Brannock device, you know, that little slide rule thing that they use to measure your feet, the rest of my toes, including the big toe, says I wear a size 9. That one toe says I wear a nine and a half. Do you know how hard it is to find a nine and a half? I dare you to go look for one, okay? Okay. Need to fiddle with this camera just, excuse me, just a tiny bit. Because, yeah, you could probably see I have a new, new chair. I got this new chair sort of under duress but under orders if you go look them up in in Amazon and look up gaming chairs you can find some with footrests now you can get some with footrests where it's just this little pillow thing that you pull out that's on two sticks and it's got this pillow way off down here that you set your ankles on. For me that's very uncomfortable. It just is. It means that my knees aren't supported and then they do a bend backwards. Yes, I have hyperextensive joints. 
not always a good thing. Yeah. So when I have had my podiatrist and my regular doctor both looking at me going, why aren't you keeping your feet elevated? When they had a sale on, on these chairs, I grabbed one. This version of the chair has a lift panel with a little widget over here on the side that you yank and, and it flips the thing up just like an old fashioned reclining chair that had, you know, an old fashioned lazy boy where you've got the little handle on the side to crank up that leg rest. And this one is as wide as the chair and solid all the way down so that when it lifts my legs up, I don't have any, th any problems with draping knees. There's none of this draping knee thing. It just pops up. Now, I can sort of do a recliner thing in this chair. But I don't wanna. It's a the whole the whole seat area, the back and the seat are all connected solid. So it tilts the whole assembly on the cradle. Yes, this was on sale. It was a hundred and sixty bucks on sale. And the reason it's on sale is because it says Speed Racer. Well, S Racer. But it's Speed Racer. Yeah, if I, if I crawled back out of the chair, you could see the logo and all that stuff. <laughs> I haven't watched Speed Racer since I was a teenager. Holy jeez. Cheese and crackers, guys. Anyway, got the chair. The toe is all healed up, at least on the exterior, which usually is the way it works. The, the, the exterior will heal up before, in, before all of the interior bits. I still have no pain. I didn't need any kind of medication with recovery, which still weirded out the um, nurse practitioner trainee who was doing his follow rounds in surgery. Man, that child turned so green with some of the stuff Doc was doing to my foot when he was doing his examination before we ever got to surgery. And technically, I don't, they gave me a sedative, but I don't know for certain if they gave me any local anesthetic, because if they did, I never felt it at all. Nothing. Now, when they go in to fix uh, the hammer toe, they're going to work on the right foot first. Both feet have got the stupid hammer toe. Both feet are, the, both hammer toes are locked in with arthritis in the joint. And because they are so long that they're a pressure issue at the toe of the shoe, he's going to do orthroplasty on the toes 
and take that chunked up upper knuckle you know the part that's doing this bit so that it's like rub 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 he's going to remove that knuckle and put my toe back together shorter Doesn't that sound like fun? And then once I've gotten over that one, he'll go back and do the other foot. Since I'm diabetic, dot, 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 he doesn't want to risk getting, you know, having too many open spots going at the same time. In the meantime, the class that I was in while I went through surgery, I, I dropped a couple of points on my grade point average. It's still not awful, but it's not quite as good as it was. So I'm hoping to make up those few percentage points up as we go along. I did a spinner pick and it came up with W7 on the rocks, neutrals on ice. Woohoo! Anyway, now I'm not sure which one this is a <clears throat> inspired by. For, but those are colors. Nothing really, really bright and shiny. Just it has to come up on the the pick wheel because this one's a little bit duller than I like to go after. It's a good basic palette but you know I'm just not into to, to dull and I like having something that's not dull to play with so I would usually go grabbing for my brighter colors Anyway, what was I looking for? I don't know. This is what I'm like when I haven't been sleeping well. Because I haven't been sleeping well. I've been having... It's not even really pain somnia this time. It's just... I'm just feeling fratsy. And just not sleeping well. Worse yet, my husband's caught it. Okay, let's see. I'm going to start with this color here. That in this is called Bellini. I don't know if W7 is still doing this particular palette or not. But I really like the, the C color and the W7 formulas and I appreciate the fact that they're very very good palettes and they've got you know inspired by color stories that you know go with some of the classics which I think is very very nice because I can't afford the classics anyway I've also just gotten finished doing a clean out on a bunch of stuff in my palette collection. My granddaughters are very happy. Imagine that. I went crazy 
and started getting rid of stuff in my palette collection that I just was not having fun with at all anymore. And I decided it was time to really start rethinking what I'm doing and what I'm buying because let's be real I don't buy to begin with I don't buy the palettes that people are looking for reviews on within a pertinent time frame to actually do the review and I don't intend to start and I have to get it through my pointed head that no matter how much less expensive stuff I buy it is never going to create the kind of excitement and following for reviews that people who can afford the heavier palettes and like buying the heavier palettes are ever going to get. You know, it just... And if you listen to the other videos with some of the some of the big children with lots of numbers. Even Angelica Nyquist was saying that if she doesn't do the reviews that the viewers are expecting, she doesn't get money to pay her rent. And I think that's a shame, but it is what it is. It just really is what it is. If you're going to be in this particular game trying to pay your rent, you do what it is that the viewers want. And That's not going to happen. I'm not going to be reviewing any big fancies. I'm not going to be reviewing a lot of the new releases. I can't afford to chase the indie brands. Oh, believe me. I chased down, and I mean chased hard, to get the um, Kaleidos Club Nebula. And I thought about what I put myself through waiting to try to guarantee myself that I would get that particular palette. Not because it was Kaleidos, not even really but because it was Angelica. Yeah. She's a gamer, like I am. She even plays some of the games I play. And because she likes science fiction and gaming and science, some of the names of the colors in that particular palette go along with the games, which I think is just delightful. There are 
names of, of character types and such in there and and galactic phenomena and all manner of thing and I love it which is where I went after it now I'm really 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 digging the colors and such in the new Angelica collab but after what I put myself through to get the Club Nebula as much as I like the Helia excuse me Helia and as much as I want to try Odin's Eye I'm not sure I can do that again where I sit waiting for the restock to hit the screen and then scramble to try to make sure I've got all my crap together so that I can get it through on the um, purchase list before they're all sold out. I mean, it's somebody with some faster internet speeds than I've got, which isn't hard to do, they could be taken off with it well before I even get started. So, believe me, my internet speeds are not good. I'm in an itty bitty podunk town that is not real big on getting the infrastructure together for as much as the company says they can handle sending out you know doing you know so many odd hundred megabits per and all this other stuff and then you ask them why when you do a speed test when you're paying for the fastest thing they got and you do a speed test and it's nowhere near and you're going why and it's like well sorry but it's because the town is kind of slacking on the infrastructure they haven't put up wiring sufficient upgraded enough to make it work I'm going to, why am I paying this much for this crap? And then you find out if you take the lower speed package, they'll throttle your ass anyway. So, and if you don't know what that means, they put, literally put a choke on the line to keep you from going above a certain speed point. Which is just rude beyond words, but hey. Obviously, it's how they do business. I've been working on writing. I've been working on my latest class. The new one is on the, it's a philosophy class. And it's on environmental ethics. You like that one? Environmental ethics. And we have to look at the way 
governments and individuals and people and companies handle <coughs> environmental issues. Little things like just before we moved here to Oregon, Oregon had the Columbia River Gorge fire that was started by a 15 year old with a firecracker. That's all it took, one firecracker. 100,000 acres, one firecracker. So, yeah. And there's a few problems with recovery on this. One of the problems is that the land management people are not doing some of the stuff they need to do. Little things like you know, we don't have the regrowth that we should have in the gorge. Partly because the soil is really, really loose. We've had things like Mount St. Helens dump ash in there. And it hasn't been nearly the kind of time it takes for volcanic ash and such to solidify down into a stable landmass. So it's sliding worse because the ground cover all burnt off. And then, they're not keeping an eye on what's trying to grow as ground cover, taking over for all the stuff that got burnt out. So we've got a bunch of invasive plants that are sneaking in that between the slides and the invasive plants, the natives are getting smothered. which means the land managers haven't been doing what they're supposed to be doing for stabilization, which is where they should be yanking the invasive plants and doing other remediation. I'm not sure what the remediation is. I just... know that the reports are showing they haven't done the remediation they're supposed to do so that we get the native species back and get the ground stabilized again. So, yeah, not great. Not really great at all. Oh, 
Oh, by the way, can you tell which which natural disaster I'm doing my final paper on for this class? Can you tell? I bet you can smell it from here. So I'm working on that. But some of the stuff that they brought up in this particular class also goes to the situation where it has been a really trashy policy of a lot of places in a lot of places where if there is toxic material that needs to be buried, stored, otherwise gotten out of the middle of town where the rich folks live, that very often the stuff that they move isn't really so much necessarily out of town as it is just out of sight, out of mind of the people in the better neighborhoods. And how a lot of companies that dump toxic waste are doing a um, <clears throat> go for the forgiveness instead of permission thing. And then when they come to find out later that there was a problem, all of a sudden, Mr. Corporate Man is begging off, telling the regulatory agencies that they really, really can't do a full cleanup, even though it's hazardous to the health of some people, I can't do a full cleanup because it's just too expensive to do now. And it doesn't matter when this happened, it's always just the current economy is to blame. for why they can't fix it. Always. Always. So then you end up with Places where stuff that oughtn't be, you know, kind of like Love Canal, if anybody has, has, has ever read that one. Or like that really nasty chemical spill in 
West Virginia that took out a whole section of some towns and that includes Charleston which is the capital and oops look at there it, it was leaking way longer than they're trying to say it was and it's down in the ground and it's into the groundwater and it's into and it overpowered the filtration system at the water plant and it's just too much they can't handle cleaning it up we're bankrupt I was still living in West by God when that one happened it was awful no I was nowhere near it but it was a scary time because we had no idea if there were any other chemical plants around that were using the same stuff that might get loose in one of the other rivers. And the reason that the company that had it there was getting away with it for so long was because of King Coal. It was a chemical used for prepping coal to be used in steel manufacturing to provide the carbon for carbon steel. And they called themselves doing something when they started using that particular compound, which is an ethanol compound. And anybody who doesn't know what ethanol is, that's, that's drinkable alcohol, but this is not one of the particular splits that you want. It's a skin irritant. If it's hot enough, it becomes an inhalant and a respiratory irritant. And it can burn your skin, it can burn your eyes. It is not to be ingested. It is not an ingestible ester of alcohol. The other thing that didn't get mentioned when the spill first happened, it took them 12 bloody days to go, oh yeah, by the way, we have to use a solvent with this stuff because when it first gets here, it's too thick. So we use a, a glycol to thin it out. <clears throat> and this stuff was kept in metal tanks in a tank yard that was right on the edge of the river. And there was all these little issues, little things, like Department of Transportation did not consider this material hazardous. However, OSHA does. So we've got this stuff that there's arguments. About it as to whether it's hazardous or not. Arguments. And while they're busy arguing, 
about whether or not it's actually a hazardous material. I mean, you know, could be nothing. Could be something. We just don't know. And that special. Um, this stuff closed down a university campus. It closed down the state capitol. And if you look at the MSD sheet that comes from the manufacturer for this stuff, there's a little something missing. And it's one of the first things that people noticed when they, when they were wondering what the heck spilled. And that's the very strong licorice scent. This stuff smells like star anise and it's really potent. Star anise, fennel, black licorice, anything from that particular collection of herbs and spices. And that's what it smells like. And it is smellable days before the leak was found. Days. And you're going, what the heck, guys? What were we doing here? How did we miss this? Because people had been calling, going, look, smell. And but on the MSD sheet, it says physical properties. It's clear. Okay. It's liquid. Okay. Nothing mentions the smell, which with the potency of that scent, it's pretty amazing if somebody wouldn't notice that first. So, they kind of blew it off originally when people started reporting being able to smell this stuff. Just kind of blew it off a bit. I mean, why borrow trouble, huh? Yep, yep. Gotcha. Why borrow trouble? People were getting sick. People were without water that they could do anything with. I mean, you couldn't even flush your toilet with this stuff. And what they figured would take just a few days and they could then just flush the water system, not only took out the filters for the water processing plant it took out whole chunks of stuff they had to eventually flush the water processing plant completely. And then they had to go around and teach all the people how to flush their home water systems. But 
that nothing really happened to the guys that owned the company because, oh, hey, we're bankrupt. We can't do nothing. Love to help you, but we just can't, boss. And then one of the company's executive officer types started another company within just a couple of months of this disaster. Used the address, the phone numbers, email, all of that, registered this new company with the State Corporation Commission and he was on, rec on record with State Corporation Commission for the company that was running the tank farm And then he starts this brand new company with all that same info. And it's like nobody batted an eye, nobody said a word. Not one word. So, hey, you know, your company goes bankrupt because of a major environmental issue. So what do you do? Make a new company. got to keep your clients happy after all. They still want their stuff. And you've still got access to all the stuff in that tank farm. Isn't that amazing? And you wonder how they get away with it. I dare you to go ask Joe Manchin at the U.S. Capitol building. That's his kind of deal. King Cole strikes again. All right. This is the Midas bitchin eyeliner palette. They're all little cake eyeliners. Little fluid. You can use water. Whatever. I use a homemade version of that Inglot liner stuff.
Amendola line or whatever it's called. They've still got a couple of the other um, liner palettes. At least they did a couple of days ago when I looked. But even on their going out of beadness sale, it's still not still not really in a place where my wallet is comfortable laying. I know, there's some of this stuff I shouldn't bother to do until after I put the rest of my face on, but I've always been contrary, so. But yeah, that's, that's the kind of stuff I'm working on this class. So I can get my politic on. Definitely interesting. We'll see how this goes. What am I doing? I have no idea. This is just like any other picker wheel spin. I spin it. I find out which palette I've got. And I take my hand to it. Now, I did get rid of a bunch of stuff, not just palettes, just a bunch of stuff. It's like I don't need to be trying out many different foundations. I just don't. I'm not ever going to do expensive foundations. The only time I did expensive foundations was when I was buying a lot of Estee Lauder perfume, I would go to the Estee Lauder counter on one of the days that they were doing the, here, get this whole sample thing with the pretty bag for spending thus and so amount. I'd buy a large size bottle of one of my favorite scents and wander off with the small bottle of double wear and that kind of thing. And a lipstick, and da da da. And I thought I was doing something. And I was, because the color of the foundation never worked. I'm not sure what I was doing, but I was doing something. The foundation did not have a color that worked on me, which is just kind of sad, because I wore it anyway. I've gotten better. I really have gotten better about that. I do try to find a foundation that fits my face color. Doesn't always work. Because my skin is uncooked chicken. But I've got a 
yellow undertone to it that can create some interesting looking colors out of others. I think my husband's trying to dismantle the kitchen. Alrighty. I've been nattering and nattering and nattering. And I've already nattered forever. And I'm going to pause my camera and shut my mouth and put the last bits on and then come back and talk to y'all some more but I mean I've already yacked for about an hour I'll probably see if I can cut out some of the long pauses I'm back here you go and yes if you have questions, or if you haven't been here before, yes, I cut my hair off. Normally, I've got a bit of a hawk here, and I cut it off. And then I put a door platinum on it to even out all the tones. And yes, I bleached it a little bit first. But this evened out all of the tones for a little while. I got rid of all the stuff that has been multi-bleached and multicolored and multi-bleached again. And <laughs> it was time. So here's my spring cleanup. I don't know. I'm getting really, really thrilled with the way this is working. I may just get me a couple of wigs for longer hair things. Anyway, mind your manners. If you have not gotten your vaccine, get on with it. What are you waiting for? We are not out of the woods yet. Wear your mask if you are still under mask requirements consider doing it whether you are or not especially if either you are not well or you've got something going on like your seasonal allergies that are making you immunocompromised because your body is reactive just do it don't argue with me keep your distance do not get up in other people's faces do not get up in their faces and tell them that they are this that and the other rude word if they're wearing their mask when they feel they ought to they ain't hurting you shut up don't start nothing just remember, don't start nothing. I do not have bail money. Be good.